Welcome to Dr. BT's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video, we're going to be building on the previous video, um, and if you haven't already checked that out, do check it out on the types of structure and bonding. And we are going to be looking at explaining the variation in melting points across periods two and three using these ideas of structure and bonding. So here we have a typical graph. On the x-axis, we have period three. And on the y-axis, we have an increasing melting and boiling point in Kelvin. So we have two trend lines on this graph. The first trend line here is the lower melting point, And then the second trend line here is the higher boiling point. But you can see they follow pretty much the same patterns as we go across the period. Now, as we go across the period, the types of structure and bonding change. So we're going to look at these in sections. So we've got four sections to look at. The first section is going from sodium, magnesium to aluminium. And the types of bonding that these three different groups, group one, two and three do, is metallic bonding in its elements. So we can see that they're giant metallic structures. And we can see that the trend within this little part of the graph is we have an increase as we go from group one to group two to group three. We need to be able to explain that. And it's all to do with the strong attraction between the metal ions and the delocalized electrons. And as we go from group one to group two to group three, each of these as their metal ions have a higher charge. And with this increasing charge, that means they also have more delocalized electrons per ion. So aluminum three plus, to have created aluminum three plus, you would have had to delocalize three electrons. So you have three electrons to every one aluminum ion versus two electrons delocalized for every magnesium two plus ion and one electron for every one plus sodium ion. And furthermore, due to the atomic radii of sodium to magnesium to aluminum becoming increasingly smaller, then we have smaller ions and if you remember the videos on atomic radii, the reason this is smaller is because the proton number increases as we go from sodium to magnesium to aluminium. And that has a greater pull on the outermost electron. So basically reduces that radius. So that smaller ion, that small atomic radius, means that the charge, the three plus charge, is spread over a smaller area than would be on the sodium one plus charge, which is a bigger ion. And so we call this charge density. So taking these two points of increasing charge, but decreasing atomic radius, we can talk about the increasing charge density as we go from group one to group three. And so this increasing charge density coupled with the increase in delocalized electrons means that as we go from group one, to two to group three, that there's a stronger attraction between those metal ions of higher charge density and the more delocalized electrons that are around. And so it requires more energy to break this stronger attraction, and hence why we have a higher melting point and boiling point. And we can summarize this in this little flowchart of concepts. So be sure to learn this sort of flow of ideas in order to answer this increase between sodium, magnesium, and aluminium. Now we're going to focus in on silicon, which is an example of a group four element. This would also apply for carbon as well in period two. So group four elements, silicon for period three or carbon for period two, are giant covenant structures. And when we are melting or boiling a giant covenant structure, we require lots of energy, as you can see. These are the peaks of both our melting point and our boiling point trends. And the reason being is that we require lots of energy to overcome the network of very strong covalent bonds. In fact, covalent bonds are the strongest types of bonds that we have. And so when I explain this part of the period, we just need this explanation here. Now we look at other non-metal elements. So we're going to look at phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. And these 
elements form simple molecules. Now in comparison to giant metallic structures and giant covalent structures, the simple molecular structures have a very low melting point and boiling point as shown on this graph. And that's because they involve weak induced dipole-dipole forces or London forces or Van der Waals forces depending on your exam board. Now as whilst this requires a lot more detail for explanation of how dipole-dipole intermolecular bonds work, it's just worth reminding that both the giant covalent structures and simple molecular structures have covalent bonds between the atoms. When you melt or boil a simple molecular structure, you are not disrupting these strong covalent bonds. Instead, you're disrupting the weak dipole-dipole bonds between molecules. So here we have two chlorine molecules, Cl2. These solid lines represent the strong covalent bonds. But unlike a giant covalent lattice structure, when we melt or boil chlorine molecules, it is the weak intermolecular forces between them, which we often show as dashed lines. And it's these that break during melting or boiling. Now, really important, we can see a little trend that is occurring in the group 5 to 7 simple molecular structures. You can clearly see that sulfur has the higher melting points and boiling points, followed second to phosphorus, and thirdly, we've got chlorine. And it's all linked to the size of the molecules. So sulfur is S8, phosphorus P4, and chlorine Cl2. And the bigger the molecule, the more electrons there are in that molecule. And the more electrons there are, the stronger these London forces are between each molecule in question. And the stronger these London forces, then that means we require more energy to overcome the traction between each of the molecules and therefore we require a higher melting point or boiling point. Now linked to the explanation for the simple molecular structures is our monoatomic noble gases. So the monoatomic noble gases are obviously single atoms. They don't need to bond to anything because they have full outer shells and are stable. What does attract each individual atom to one another is the same types of forces, London forces, that hold our simple molecules with other simple molecules. And so these London forces are incredibly weak with the noble gases. And this is because compared to the simple molecules that are bigger molecules and therefore have more electrons, you only have a singular argon atom with its electrons being attracted to another singular argon. And so this concludes our journey across period three and how the different types of structures can explain the different melting points and boiling points. Now, if when we went through any of these different types of structures, you had any confusion around them, ensure that you go and look at the video titled Types of Structure and Bonding as this will allow you to understand the key concepts and properties of these different types of structures. So what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video and try and explain using these headings of structure, forces and particles, each of these different four areas of period three. Just to let you know what we mean by structure, so we're thinking about is it giant covalent, giant metallic, simple molecular, monoatomic. Forces are the forces that you are breaking when you melt or boil. And then particles are such things as atoms. Is it molecules? Is it ions? So pause the video now and have a go to see if you can recall that. Okay, so your answers should have looked like so. And just to make you aware, ID, ID is just instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, same as simple molecular. 
So if you've remembered all that, you remember the key concepts there. To put this into practice, here's an example of a past paper question. So it's a six marker. I'm going to allow you to pause the video now, have a go at it, and then we'll go through the answer together. So first we're going to tackle the trend in the melting point from silicon to chlorine across period three. So you need to take a similar format to what we've just previously done and summarising it. So knowing that group 14 or group four is with silicon, we have giant covalent as the structure. Its forces are covalent bonding and the particles are atoms. Then we turn our attentions to group 15 through to 17. So we've got phosphorus, we've got sulfur and we've got chlorine. And they all undergo simple molecular structures. The forces between them are our induced dipole, dipole. And this is between molecules. And you can see in our explanation here, in all of these three bullet points, we've talked about the structure in the first bullet point, followed by the forces between, and then thirdly, the particles. We then need to comment on the strength of these forces um, in period three. And so we need to just say that, first of all, covalent bonds are very strong compared to the instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, London forces or van der Waals forces, whatever you want to talk about in that. So therefore, we that in that statement, we're comparing group 14 to collectively groups 15, 16 and 17. And then we just need to drill down and show to the examiner that we understand that this trend in the melting points here is due to the size of the molecules and the electrons in these molecules. You can see in the question they've told us that P4S8 are the sizes for phosphorus and sulfur, and you're expected to always know that any of the halogens are diatomic. And so in this statement here, we're just tying in that Obviously, sulfur is S8, as stated here, has the highest melting point, followed by phosphorus, P4, 44, and chlorine is minus 102. And that's due to the, the molecular size and due to higher molecular sizes having more electrons. At this point, you can tell the examiner that you understand that the stronger the force, the higher the melting point. And all those marks would mean that you've scored as highly as you can on this first part of the question. Now, the second part of the question says comment with reasons on similarities and differences in the trends across period three and period four. So this is where they're asking you to use some information that you know from the um, A-level syllabus and apply it to a slightly new situation. So firstly, we're just going to comment on the melting points of group, uh, period four. Um, and we can see that germanium is 938 so it is the highest of the four so that is very similar to period three as silicon was the highest of the four in period three you can see selenium also has a similar sort of trend as period three and bromine has a similar trend to chlorine so the biggest difference here is arsenic at 817 it's comparable to germanium which is in group 14. now we know silicon and germanium are likely to be um, giant covalent lattices and because arsenic is also in this ballpark figure then we can also suggest that arsenic is different to phosphorus in that arsenic is a giant covalent lattice whereas phosphorus is obviously a simple molecular. And the final difference that you could comment on is germanium compared to silicon does have around about 400 degrees difference and that is due to very very much so the weaker covalent bonds that germanium must have compared to silicon covalent bonds and that concludes everything you can really talk about for the six marks obviously the examiners not expect you to do, have all of these points um, there's different levels to these sorts of six mark questions but if you expended the trends in the melting point across period three using the ideas of structure, particles and forces, and also identified the high melting point of arsenic suggesting a giant covalent lattice, then that will get you in that top band of five to six marks here. 
So at the end of this video, that has concluded looking at variations in melting points across periods two and three in terms of structure and bonding. And to get to that point, we've had to understand a lot about the different types of bonding and structure that occur, such as metallic, ionic, giant covalent and simple molecular. If you found this video useful, ensure that you like the video, ensure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get updated videos as and when they come covering A-level chemistry in a simple and easy way.